Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Come on, remember I told you this month is increase. Increase, praise God. Increase, yes. Increase. And more than ever before, you must believe God. You must believe God. Now that's all I can tell you. You know what God said? I need to tell you this before we make demand for our daily bread. Let me read it to you. Hebrews, Hebrews, book of Hebrews, 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 chapter 13. Hebrews 13 is the last chapter in the book of Hebrews. So just go to the last chapter before the book of James. Now he said, verse 5, Hebrews chapter 13, verse, this verse of scripture, these two verses should be your anthem. Oh, cram it, know it, eat it, meditate on it. You need this. <laughs> you do. <laughs> what it, does it say? It says, let your conversation, conversation there means your mode of living, your manner of living, the way you live your life, okay? Let your conversation be without covetousness. In other words, don't remove covetousness from your mind. What is covetousness? The the thinking that you must get something before you say you have or by what you have means you are, okay? That's covetousness. So covetousness is you thinking, I can't call myself a millionaire until I have millions in my account. That's covetousness. Yes, that is it. Yes, that's in, in the simplest language, that's what covetousness means. Now, on the reverse side, covetousness also means you thinking you are broke because you don't have money in your account. That also is covetousness. Okay, so a man can be storing up money, say, ah, that's the only way I can be a millionaire. Another man can be crying, I wish, I wish I, I would be something if I can just have money in my account. Okay. That's covetousness, the thinking that with, you can lay your trust in physical things is covetousness. There's a difference between covetousness and greed. There's a difference. It's not the same thing. Please note that. Now he says, let your manner of life be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now you notice, he said, don't live in covetousness. Rather, be satisfied with what you have. Now, that's simple because with what you have, you can get anything. Yes, you always have something. There is always something you have. You remember that, that woman who cried out to Elisha, you know, with her son, that the husband was dead and the creditors were coming. You remember that woman? Elisha asked her, what do you have? Thank God she was smart enough to say, I have a jar of oil. And he says, that's cool enough. So be content with such things as you have. Imagine a woman comparing herself, look at my life, only this jar of oil. What can I do with this jar of oil? What she didn't know that that jar of oil was sufficient enough to make her the new um, oil distributor in town. You see, all that needed to be added was just the mercy element. Praise <laughs> God. So, so he says, be content with such things as you have because you have something. Why? For he had Past tense. He's not saying it now. He's not speaking in prophecy. He had, he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Brothers and sisters, this is what God has said. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's what God has said. Now watch this. He said that so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Listen, the policies of government is man-made. Now, now, if the government say we are going to increase prices of goods, Increase prices of electricity, increase prices of, of, of gas, of fuel, increase prices of anything that is in under our control. We're going to increase prices. That's man. Now, the reason God told you that he will never leave you nor forsake you is for this reason. He knew a day is coming when the government is going to misbehave. He knew a day is coming when the government is not going to care for you. He knew. 
He knew a day is coming that the government is not going to care one bit about you. They will care for themselves, do things to please only them, take all the tax they can take from you just to satisfy their, 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 their way of living. He knew. No government is thinking about you. Every government is thinking of how to use you. But God knew. So he said, Kamunde Pradesh. He said this before. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I want you to say to yourself right now, God is with me. Can you, can you boldly say, God is with me. Praise God. Yes. So that you will not be afraid what any man can do to you. The boss is threatening you. Hey, if you don't do this thing I've told you to do, and, and you know it's against your principles. I'm going to fire you. I'm going to make you lose your... I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to do it. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. You don't need to be... Act in an offensive manner. You don't need to act in a disrespect, disrespectful manner. You don't need to. Thank you, sir. If it is so, <laughs> a God whom I serve will be able to deliver me from that situation and he will deliver me from your hand, oh God. He will. And, and you're not even saying it like, let me, let me tell him I have a God who's bigger than him. No, you know, sometimes the way you communicate will just create trouble for you. You can speak the truth in a very respectful manner. You know, that's the thing. If you've heard me talk about this before, I always used to clarify that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never disrespected King Nebuchadnezzar. They never did. I wish God would open your understanding to see it. The day he did to me, I was like, wow. Now, because see, the Lord is teaching you. I know. We've not asked for our daily bread. I'm, I'm setting this foundation because you need to understand this. He is with you to give you boldness. So you can answer every man in an honorable manner, yet not compromising. Why won't you compromise? Because you have God with you there. Now, it is fear that makes people compromise. Yes. So when the king said, if you don't bow, I'll throw you into that fire. Said, it's not a problem. We have a God who's with us. Praise God. He said, he didn't say, he said in the New Testament, he had said, Okay, he had said. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking with what he has said. Our God whom we serve, he is able to deliver us from the fullness. So fullness is not our problem, okay? Now, that's another day story. But I'm telling you how to respond to issues. Yeah. The price of things have increased. He has said, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me so that I will say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what the government policy will do to me. So you don't join and say, can you imagine? We'll all be spending our money to buy fuel now. We'll all be spending our money to buy food stuff. We'll all be spending our money to buy. Hey. Come on, the if you start talking like that, now what are you doing? You're speaking out of fear. You are doing the opposite of what God is in, what God intended when he said he will never leave you or he will never forsake you. Have you stopped believing that he is with you? Or if God is in you, where is he? Don't fear. Don't fear. Allah barakatuh. Don't fear. Don't fear. What, what, what should be your response when you hear price of things have gone up? Price of transportation is high. Price of this is up. Lord, you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Hey, Lord, I boldly say, my God who is with me will help me get it. I don't think, ah, I don't think I can, ah, no, I can't buy that thing I wanted. No, 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 no. My Lord will help me buy it. My God will bring it to me. I will not fear. Praise God. Can we say that together? I will not fear what any man 
be it the president, the lawmakers, the, the whoever. You're a man. You can't do nothing to me. I said, not disrespectfully, but in honor. Why? Because you honor the Lord who is with you. Now, with this understanding, can we make demand for our daily bread? <laughs> Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. And it comes with increase, Lord. Yes, you are matching every inflation in the system, Lord. You are matching every inflation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we receive it now from you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> now, do you believe what you just prayed? Do you believe what you just said? If you don't believe yourself, believe God. What did God say? What did God say? He will never leave you. When you want to pay for that thing, remember he will never leave you. When you have to spend your last money, he re just remember he will never leave you. Oh, go check the words of Jesus. He taught us how to handle times like this. Praise God. I pray the Lord brings us into those things. Now, remember yesterday we were, we were talking about, it, it's done. Listen, your daily bread is done. It's done. Praise God. So we're talking about Pharaoh and, and, and the children of Israel. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. We were in Exodus chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hands over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. So God fulfilled. Now imagine if that sea, if the, the land just still had some little water on it, that would have been fine. But God who is too fit, that's why uh, uh, Proverbs tells us, let your eyes observe my saying. Observe what God says because every word that comes out of his mouth, he is ready to fulfill it to the letter. If God said you will walk on dry land, Brothers and sisters, believe God. When he does his thing, the ground must be dry before you move. He's not going to forget that part. <laughs> he won't forget. Everything God said. You know, it amazed me when, when, when I saw that in scriptures. God had spoken to, to Abraham. Ah, I wish I can show you that now, but to deviate us. God had spoken to Abraham and said, look, your children are going to be in a foreign land and then they are going to deal with them for 400 years. And then God said, after 400 years, they will come out. And when they are coming out, they will come out with great substance. Now that's Part, they will come out with great substance. Go check this in Genesis 15. God spoke to Moses concerning it. That part, God said they will come out with great substance. It's easy to miss it. Now, by the time they've been in that land for so long, they were so oppressed that just coming out of the land was enough miracle. It was good enough for them just to have that breath of fresh air. You understand what I'm talking about? But God, who is so faithful to his word, remembered what he spoke about over five, more than 500 years before that. Yeah, because he was speaking to Abraham and Abraham lived. He had Isaac. Isaac became a man, had Jacob and Esau. Now, it was Jacob towards the end of his life that moved into Egypt. Now, after they moved into Egypt, then you, start, you don't even start counting from when they moved. You start counting from when they began to oppress them. That's when you begin to count 400 years. And God fulfilled everything he said. Everything. Everything. He, he is the one that told Moses, Hey, Moses, look, you're going to tell the children of Israel to go borrow from the Egyptians all their good things. Just tell them to give you gold, silver. Just, just tell them to give you. And I'll cause favor. You see, and God did that. And the Egyptians, the Bible said the children of Israel spoiled the Egyptians that day. They spoiled them. They packed their stuff. Now, not under gunpoint, no. 
God gave them favor. Imagine the kind of favor that will make you go and tell your neighbor, you, you, you that have not seen 100,000 before in your life that you will call your own. And then suddenly God says, go and ask your neighbor for, for 100 million naira. And then you go with your stammering lips and say, um, there, is, there is something I need to do. I, I, need, I need some money to do it. And the person goes, oh, really? How much do you need? Um, <sighs> and then the person goes, do you need up to 100 million? <laughs> Actually, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, give me your account number. Give me, uh, what's going on here? That's exactly what God did with the children of Israel. Yeah, the Bible said they spoiled them because God turned their hearts in favor for them. And they came out in fulfillment of everything. God. So in this matter, God said they will, they will walk on dry ground. And that's exactly what God did. Praise God. And the children of Israel, verse 22, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. The ground was dry. <laughs> And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. Imagine that, praise God. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and trouble the host of you. You know the story. God drowned. They all got drowned in that sea. That's the Egyptians, okay? But the children of Israel walked on dry ground in fulfillment of what God has said. Now, what am I sharing, you, sharing with you? The mercy of God was already available at that Red Sea. But see, they didn't know. They, they, they got there and were confused. What do we do? Now, looking at it from, from behind, you say, ah, God showed them mercy. Remember I was, I was talking to you about yesterday. God showed these people mercy. No, the mercy was ahead of them. The mercy was there. That's why I pointed out they didn't need to do anything extra. They didn't need to go start learning how to make boats. They didn't need to go start cutting trees and, and making them. Now, there are times God's mercy will come in such manner that you will invent something, okay? Yes. But then remember this, that before you get... Now, the, the whole journey of the children of Israel, you, you remember, after the Red Sea, you think victory. Wow, victory. Wow, our enemies are gone. Wow, see victory. See victory. <laughs> Oh, glory. <laughs> I remember one day. That's why I'm laughing. Someone walked up to my car and said, I, I thought he wanted to beg for money. You know, so he, he just walked up to me and said, um, Toga, please. Then he said, um, give me some money. Let me buy coconuts and we'll use it to pray against your enemies. I looked at that guy and a million things were in my head to say to him. <laughs> but time will not permit me. So I told the guy, don't worry. Thank you. And I left. The mentality... That I can walk up to someone and tell him that, look, we can buy coconuts and, and pray over it against your enemies. And you expect the person to jump up and say, yeah. <laughs> now, the children of Israel walk, they saw their enemies perish in the Red Sea. Now, they think they will be happy, excited. But then there was a challenge. We need water. Not just us, our animals need water. Now they just came to the Red Sea. Now they needed water. And then they were led by the same angel to water. But guess what? Imagine rushing down to that. See water, rushing down to the water. Ah, bitter waters. And Moses knew what to do this time. He didn't have to wait so long. <laughs> he has learned from the Red Sea. He didn't have to wait so long. He, Lord, the water is bitter. What do we do? These people need water. And God says, Moses, mercy was there. There was a tree. There was a tree right there. 
And God said, cut from that tree and throw into the water. And Moses did, and, and, and the water became sweet. How do you explain that? Mercy, praise God. That's the mercy of God. It was there. The water has been bitter for so long. But the cure for the bitter water was there. So God had already created. I'm telling you, trust the mercy of God, brothers and sisters. That's why I'm telling you, trust the mercy of God. And my time is up. <laughs> Remember what we dealt with today. God is with you. Can you boldly walk through this day with this mindset? Can you boldly walk through this season with this mindset? All your life, never forget, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. What's he doing? To give you mercy. Praise God. Ah, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.